Ambulances race through the streets of Toronto almost every day with victims of gun crime. 10-9 to Sunnybrook on a CTAS-1 FTT. Patient is unresponsive, GCS-3. Police report 631 gunshot victims last year, with gun homicides up 31% from the year before. The victims are rushed to the major trauma centers in the city, one at Sunnybrook Hospital, one at St. Michael's downtown. Dr. Najma Ahmed is a trauma surgeon at St. Michael's. So we're getting ready for surgery. These patients okay. have very serious and life-threatening injuries with lots of blood loss, multiple organs injured, multiple holes in injury from the blast of the bullet to multiple organs. And in the first hour or, or so, we're focused on just saving the patient's life. You know, when you look carefully at this problem, we see that there's been an increase in the number of uh, gunshot victims in urban centers like Toronto, but also in rural settings. And a lot of people don't really appreciate that the per capita death rate from firearms is higher in rural settings than it is in urban settings. The key factor in the political debate about gun control in Canada has always been the divide between the city and rural communities. At this livestock auction outside Owen Sound, Ontario, farmers come to buy and sell their cattle. The bidding is fast. The signals from buyers almost imperceptible. This is the Federal Electoral District of Bruce Gray Owen Sound. Hey, how you doing, Scott? And the local member of Parliament is Conservative Larry Miller. Anyway, so take care. He got into federal politics 15 years ago because he was upset by the Liberal government's gun control laws, and he worked hard to repeal them. How are you doing, sir? Not too bad, yourself? Not bad, good to see you. Anyway, so did you find some cattle you like today? In the coffee shop adjacent to the auction, most people would like to tell city folk to take a hike on the gun yeah. issue. I totally get and I totally understand why people in downtown Toronto have more of a fear or dislike for handguns or guns in general than somebody in rural Canada. And the difference is understanding. The rural-urban divide, and yes, it's there. What the observation of most people who live in rural Canada is that the people in the city don't give a damn about our way of life as long as their way of life is uh, being looked after, and that, that bugs the heck out of us. In fact, the homicide rate in Canada is 45% higher in rural areas than in cities. When there is a gun in the home, the homicide rate is three times higher, and the suicide rate almost five times higher. Three quarters of gun deaths in Canada are suicides. You know, a lot of this discussion though has come down to handguns, whether they're gonna ban handguns. Why do people in rural areas need handguns? I, why do you need a car? To get to work. You don't need a car. You, you could find a way, you could get a cab, whatever, but you want a car. You're gonna use that car. And what's the difference? As long as I follow the law, whether I have a car or I have a, a handgun or whatever, um, fine. Guns are a way of uh, life. It's a family thing uh, for us. Larry Miller took me on a tour of his riding. Like we're just, where we're driving here, this is one of the best deer crossings in the whole area. I've got uh, four brothers, uh, three sons, two of my sons hunt. He sees himself locked in mortal combat with the leaders of the gun control coalition in Canada. You know, there's an old saying out there, if a conservative doesn't like to hunt, he just doesn't hunt. But if you're a liberal, you try and ban, make everybody so nobody can hunt. Their goal is ultimately to take guns out of uh, people's hands. They're making us law-abiding people feel like criminals and that's what he Good evening like. and thank you for the opportunity to speak on this important subject. Dr. Ahmed recently testified before the Senate committee studying gun law proposals. 
She focused on gun violence against women. Last Wednesday, I told a woman that her 25-year-old daughter was dead. She had been shot by her common-law partner. The fatal wound was the bullet that tore through her brain from behind. And on the grandmother's lap sat a nine-month-old daughter. This was a preventable tragedy. Well, the femicide report um, documents that in uh, 2018, there were 148 women killed by femicide in Canada. And the most common method of killing was by gun. And there's quite strong evidence to suggest that guns, firearms, can be used as methods of intimidation in domestic abuse situations. A lot of women, particularly, unfortunately, in rural settings, uh, are held hostage by a firearm that's in a home. Conservative MP Larry Miller took us to his local gun range, which provides safety courses on the correct use of a firearm. Approach the firing line. My safety is on. Load your firearm. I asked him about the polls that show that while men who own guns are against more gun control, the women who live with them are in favor and feel less safe if there is a gun in the home. Uh, there's probably some women who feel like that. That's certainly not, uh, I don't think, prevalent in this area. At least I've sure never heard it. Figures can lie and liars can figure. And uh, so I don't, I don't buy that. Again, coming back to those polls, you see two-thirds of Canadians are in favour of more gun control, and yet basically your side is winning, right? You took down the long gun registry. Why is that? Why are we winning? Yeah. Well... When you start attacking the innocent Canadian and there's no positive outcome of it, meaning public safety, there's bigger fish to fry. Go and uh, deal with how these guns are coming in and um, you know they're just not willing to do that because it's not easy, it's hard. The power of the gun lobby and rural gun enthusiasts was on display recently at this Durham, Ontario town hall meeting in MP Larry Miller's riding. Minister, thanks again uh, for being here. The special guest is Bill Blair, the former Toronto police chief who is now the federal minister of border security. Mr. Blair has been mandated in a letter from the prime minister to look into the possibility of banning handguns and assault weapons in Canada is here to listen to what rural Canadians have to say about gun control. The gun lobby is here. The Canadian Coalition for Firearms Rights has invited its members to attend, and their supporters are sprinkled throughout the hall. Um, I stand here as a gun owner uh, of about 10 years, uh, alongside what appears to be about uh, several hundred of the fellow members of my community, all of whom are more thoroughly vetted than Trudeau's token Syrian refugees or the people pouring across our supposedly secure border. And I think as a former police officer, you should know better and should have tossed that mandate paper back in Trudeau's face. <laughs> Sir, the only thing this all says is every time the Liberals are in power, they come after us. There is no way you will ever tell the Canadian people they cannot have guns. We will keep them and we will hide them. Respectfully, I will say I consider gun ownership a right and rights are inalienable. It's only governments that choose to acknowledge them or not. Firearm ownership is a privilege. It's a, it's a privilege earned by each and every person in this room. It's a privilege earned because you obey the rules. You follow the law. You are responsible in your ownership. You're responsible in, and you obey the law on how you acquire your firearms, how you use your firearms, how you store your firearms, and how you dispose of your firearms. That is a, a, a privilege that each and every one of you has earned, and I thank you for that. But, but it is not a right to, to carry a firearm in this country. It's a privilege to be earned, and all of you have done so. Bill Blair is now at the end of his public consultation process and has made his report to the Prime Minister after hearing very different messages from Canadian cities and rural areas. I don't envy Bill. I respect him for coming, but, you know, he sure as heck didn't make me think that uh, I was, you know, going to be any better off as a firearms owner either.
So Bill Blair has been asked to go and look at very seriously at a handgun ban and an assault weapon ban. What will happen politically if the liberals go ahead and do that? If you want to do something really stupid and, and help the opposition, which is us, then go ahead and do that. There's a very strong, very vocal, very well organized lobby of people who own firearms and perhaps even a smaller group of people who speak on their behalf. And they're very loud and they have, in my view, dominated the conversation and dominated public policy in this area for a long time. Hey everybody, it's Rod Giltaka from the CCFR. You may have heard about the CCFR's conflict with this group, Doctors for Protection from Guns or something. Recently, the Canadian Coalition for Firearm Rights has launched an attack against doctors who involve themselves in this debate, echoing the famous NRA demand that doctors should shut up and stay in their lane. Gun control is not an argument about cigarettes. It's not an argument about seat belts, okay? And that's why it's a lot more complex, and that's why we say stay in your lane. So that's not likely to happen that I'm going to shut up <laughs> or that physicians are going to shut up on this matter. Uh, you know, everyone has uh, the right to engage in this debate. This is why we have formed this coalition, Canadian Doctors for Protection from Guns, because we believe that this is very much a public health issue. Public health facts, no gun lobby attacks. Hmm? On April 3rd, Doctors across the country participated in a day of action calling for stricter gun laws. An injury and death from guns is nearly a daily occurrence in Canada now. And, and it doesn't have to be this way. We can act. Dr. Ahmed led them to City Hall, where they were greeted by Mayor John Tory. Thank you so You're here as, as promised. Who has asked the federal government to ban handguns in his city. If it's going to save a life or two or three or four or five and save trauma for a lot of families of people who don't die, then isn't it something that you should be very seriously looking at doing? Okay. Dr. Ahmed was encouraged by the reaction to the doctor's rally. I feel like things are changing, uh, potentially. I feel that people are engaged. I feel that doctors and physicians have witnessed enough to make them believe that uh, now is the moment that we can change this trajectory. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah. You're very welcome. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. The federal government was expected to announce new gun control proposals, but it appears that with another federal election on the horizon, any further changes are on hold. Terence McKenna, CBC News, Toronto. Done with guns!